Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Today's episode is all about how to recognise and deal with a creative block. But before we get into that, um, by the time this episode airs, the October challenges will be in full swing. And as always, we gave you plenty of challenges to choose from, but some of you might be doing the Inktober challenge. And if you are, a quick reminder that you might like to go back and listen to episode 18, where we had a really lovely chat with Jake Parker, who founded the Inktober challenge. And it's well worth a listen because I found what he had to say really, really fascinating yeah and meanwhile thank you to everyone who shared their work on social media throughout the september challenges we're recording this a bit too early to comment on the work shared this month but we wanted to mention a few of the names from september so a few of the people that caught my eye are Catherine c slater not only did she do the sketching when she's been doing the topic of trees but she's also been blogging and creating embroidery as well did you see the embroidery she did. i did yeah lovely yeah and also we've got Kim Hine, I think who's one of our biggest supporters. And uh, she wrote some great poetry and crazy sketches every day. She's just done a walkthrough of her sketchbook as well in the group. We've got Claire Dumphy, who's created some lovely ink sketches. Her work, I think it's really versatile because she can seem to do things for imagination, things she sees, all sorts. And I've also been really enjoying the poetry created by Cheryl Martin and John Munro. Um, so what about you? What's caught your eye? Well, first of all, yours. <laughs> really? <laughs> I loved your sketches. The ones you did when you were in Devon um, on your little break. Oh, they were amazing. Absolutely oh, fantastic. I love them. I've really, really enjoyed um, looking at your sketches. And you did quite a few on one page, didn't you, as well, which was new for you because you were, you were used to doing one per page. And Yeah, and I know why you mentioned that because <laughs> it was your idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were great. And, and um, I, I tell you what, when I see you next, I want you to bring that sketchbook with you. I want to have a little nose. <laughs> it's heavy. It's a bit too heavy. Oh, is it? All oh, right. Yeah. Um, and Dorothy Walker, she did the Quick Kicks Challenge, which last month was Blind Contour. Um, and they just got better and better throughout the month. So I really enjoyed um, watching Dorothy's work. Oh, it's fantastic. And she kept on drawing herself as well, a little selfies, yeah. didn't she? Yes, she did. Yeah, they were great. Um, Ingella, is that how you pronounce it? Ingella? I'm not sure. Ingella Martinson, she did some really, really fun drawings. She didn't write which challenge she was doing, but I presume it was for the Sketchathon. Um, but anyway, hers were great. Um, and Ben King, he did some great work for Sketchathon too. Um, Bradley Bergen, he took part in Poet Ember and he did some fantastic poems. And often he'd kind of use a photographic background to kind of help enhance the atmosphere of the poem and that was really clever and he's a really good poet too um and one other one I want to mention Marion Plowman she wrote a poem for Poet Ember which I really want to read out because I think it's really apt for today's topic so do you mind if I read it go ahead it's only short so anyway she says I don't have the ability today the capacity or potential. I'm obviously lacking in all skills and talent essential. I'm completely devoid of aptitude, expertise and flair. No competence, mastery, proficiency or savoir faire. All dexterity and prowess, adroitness exceptionally spent. My cleverness and brilliance just got up and went. <laughs> I thought that was so good. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could go on and on. Um, there was so much going on in September. There was loads of blogging for the 30 days of blogging. Um, I think it's probably been our busiest month yet. Do you? Yeah, and I, I feel really guilty because I was looking through and I was thinking, well, I can't read any more because there's just there's so much good stuff going on. Yeah. And definitely the sketching one and the poetry one seem to really go down a storm. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing those again next year. Yeah. Actually, I think we ought to do a poetry one sooner because everybody seemed to love that. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. sort something out then. Um, anyway, what's new with you? Well, as you just mentioned, I went to Devon on holiday, which was fantastic. And I actually did more drawing, I think, than I've ever done 
ever done before you know each day since about college which is amazing I was I was loving it and I, as well as having um, the sketchbook and doing multiple drawings which obviously was your idea I um, I was also using watercolors which I haven't done for quite a while well not much for quite a while um, and I actually think that doing something different like like you suggested I'm not suggesting for one moment that you called my creative block <laughs> but uh, I think that doing things on the one page and doing something a little bit different really did help oh and I also you've probably seen this already but I had that idea to create an outdoor hands-free sketching platform <laughs> for, for this for this challenge so the idea was some way that you could stand and have a support sort of hanging from you so you didn't have to hold up your sketchbook so I actually made one and made a little video and I made it out of some quite funny things it was actually a, a cooling rack and a chopping board so uh, yeah that that was quite fun so what about you what's new with you well, first of all, when you um, <clears throat> told me about your hands-free sketching kit idea, I was a bit sort of confused because I was thinking, how how can you sketch without hands? So I just couldn't quite get what you were trying to say until I saw the video. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Genius. Well, well that's why I put my marker in yeah. my mouth. In the video <laughs> yeah. <you. laughs> it was great. No, I think that's such a good idea. I really, I'd, I'd want one. I think they're brilliant. Well, I think I might actually blog it and put it with a video yeah. just um, so we've got it as a record. Because obviously in social media, it sort of disappears, doesn't it? Mm. If I put it on, on the blog and I'll just write what I did as well. And I've actually tested it and it does seem to work. Which I've only used it for drawing so far. I haven't used it for painting. Can't quite work out the best way to keep water up there. So I'm going to have to test that a bit. Mm. Although when you're sketching, perhaps you could just buy one of those um, or use one of your water reservoir pens instead brushes yeah but they're great but if you're using watercolors you do sort of need to wash wash it off yeah bit, that's you? true yeah some kind of clip to go on the side yeah mm. um what's new with me anyway i have finally crawled out of my creative slump we will go into that in a bit but um i've actually started using my blog again it's starting to see some activity my instagram page has woken up and i'm finally working from a clean slate on two new paintings which i'm so relieved about um i've got a glass of whiskey on the go uh, i mean i don't mean now <laughs> 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 i mean a painting which i'm so close to finishing now i think maybe another few hours on it and that'll be done um and i've been sharing the process of that on both my instagram and my blog um and i'm also back on the marbles which of course i love to paint oh i don't know about this one yeah it's, it's only well i've only just started it so i just wanted to do a couple of things that i felt really comfortable doing <laughs> do you know what I mean? so i thought let's do that and uh, I'm loving it I'm absolutely loving it it's been way too long since I felt that high when I walked into the studio um, and I had to do a lot of soul searching to get to the bottom of what's been going on and once I'd done that it meant that I could take some action and do something about it um, and honestly I would say only two or three weeks ago I was really worried about doing this episode and I almost suggested that we you know move it <laughs> because it just felt too close I was still in the thick of it really but I think now it's absolutely perfect timing because I'm speaking from really raw experience but I have come out of the other side so it just feels like perfect timing to me now yeah I mean I was having the same problem as well I mean I perhaps came out of it a little bit before you yeah um but yeah it, you're in there and it's like how do we do this episode because we don't actually know how to get out of it and sort it out ourselves mm. But I mean, I've been through them before, so <clears throat> I, I can draw on previous experiences and, and I always know that I'm going to come out of them. But it, when you're actually in it, it kind of doesn't feel like it's going to, that helps much. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but anyway, so in, in this episode, we're actually going to talk about that, aren't we? How to recognise and deal with a creative block and also why we have them. Um, so, so you said we both just had these creative blocks and I think everybody goes through them, you know, if, if not a couple of times a year, you probably at least have one. And if you haven't, you will at some point. And it's all about being creative. That is just a part of the life of a creative. And the fact that you know it's normal doesn't really necessarily mean that it's easier to deal with. But uh, at least you know you're not the only one. Absolutely. And I think <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to look at is how to recognise if you are actually going through a block. Because sometimes it's not immediately obvious I mean, you might just feel like you haven't had the time to create when subconsciously you've actually been avoiding it. 
Um, so a good question to ask yourself if you haven't been creative for a while is why? And this is where you've got to be really honest with yourself. You know, are your reasons valid? Um, or are you just finding ways to avoid getting to work for underlying reasons? Yeah, I mean, sometimes it can come with periods of feeling really low and down. And that then becomes like a vicious cycle. So you don't create because you feel low. And then the lack of creating actually makes you feel even lower. Because I know, I don't know about you, but if I'm not either drawing or coming up with ideas, that makes me feel quite down. I have to have some project on the go. Yeah. Are you the same? Absolutely, 100%. If if I've got nothing going on in the art studio, you can guarantee I'm not feeling very happy. It's like there's a part of me that's missing, do you know what I mean? Yeah, strange, isn't it? Yeah, but procrastination, that is a definite alarm bell and I've said this before that if my house is immaculate then it can sometimes indicate that there's not a lot going on in my studio so if you find yourself cleaning or doing other mundane things that could really wait then you know things that you'd normally leave until you finish your creative work then that could be a sign that you're going through a block so Tara if if you're start if you find yourself hoovering you definitely know you're going through a block because I know you don't like hoovering well, I was actually going to say, if my house is immaculate, <laughs> it's actually usually nothing to do with the creative slump. And it's it's more because my other half is at home and has a day off <laughs> and he's been cleaning up because my slumps never run quite that deep. <laughs> so uh, another sign that you're procrastinating is that you're spending a lot of time like reading books or gathering information, watching YouTube videos or buying art materials. I'm very good at buying art materials. Ah, um, and you sort of end up fooling yourself that doing all these things is, is actually part of your creating. You know, you're preparing yourself, you're getting ready. But sometimes it's actually good to take in this creative input because you can get inspired that way. But there is a really fine line between getting, getting inspired and just over-consuming. You know, because you're doing it really as a delay tactic to stop you drawing. You're waiting for that perfect situation. So if it does go on too long, you might want to look at why you're avoiding creating. And if you do think you're having a block, don't panic. Just look back to last time, like you were saying you do, Sandra, because you've had a few. Yeah. And it will pass and it won't last forever. No, I mean, some some blocks last a lot longer than others, depending on how deep they go. It is possible to get so far into a block that you doubt you'll ever be creative again. And you might even feel like turning your back on it altogether. And I know of some really prolific artists out there who've been through the exact same thing. And this is what happened to me earlier this year. It was probably the longest block I've ever been through um, up to now. And I'd say that by the end of August, if if a tree had fallen on my studio and completely destroyed it, I, I would have probably been relieved at the time because that would have given me the perfect excuse to just wave the white flag and, and be done with it. But... That said, under there somewhere, I I knew that it would pass eventually and that is what fueled me to ride the storm and I think that just comes with experience. But one of the most important things to try and figure out when you feel a block like this is what the trigger was. So um, if or when you're going through it yourself, look back to when you think it started and then look back even further to the weeks or months leading up to that point. Think about not just what was going on creatively but also personally too I mean there can be so many causes but figuring out what caused yours could be the key to preventing another block in the future so Tara what what do you think caused your slump this year well you remember I was really enjoying drawing faces yeah and I was experimenting especially when on when on holiday earlier this year I was absolutely loving it and I you you get to that point where you actually like what you're producing yeah, and that doesn't happen that often. Mm. But I'd actually created a few bits. And I thought, you know, I quite like them. They're they're starting to kind of develop into something. And then I decided to see if I could sell them. But I think we had a chat, and you you said to me, "Oh, I know faces don't sell that well unless they're actually of you know the people themselves." So I thought, um, I think I might try doing some animals because you know I like drawing those as well. So I switched to that, and then just tested to see if I could sell them. It wasn't a big serious thing. But what started happening was people started asking me if I did commissions because they wanted pictures of their own pet. And whereas I'd normally say no straight off, and I had done that a couple of times before, I thought, do you know what, I'm going to try it. Because they were just sketches, so I thought, oh, they're only quick, they won't take me too long. And whereas I was doing 10-minute sketches, I knew they'd take me like you know 20 minutes to do to one of these. So I took on a commission, and I think I probably spent 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes on these sketches. But of course, I did it a few times 
because I was, you know, scared it didn't look good enough. And also the reference I got, whereas I've been using these really good photos, I got obviously a, like a home snap, someone had done their dog. So it wasn't clear, you couldn't see its eyes that well. So I was using bad reference material, didn't enjoy it. And then I was terrified of showing the person because I thought they're never gonna like it. Well, well luckily they did, but it kind of, I don't know, it almost put that pressure on myself and I started not liking it so much. And I think that was probably the tipping point. Carry on drawing the animals rather than sticking to the faces that I was loving at the time. It's really strange. Was it my fault? I think, <laughs> so, yeah, totally your fault. But you, don't worry, you brought it back out of me by getting me to do the full pages. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't your fault at all. I mean, you were being you were being honest. You were just telling me that, um, you know, faces don't sell unless they're actually Well, yeah. It's the same with pets, I guess, though, isn't it? Yeah. You draw animals. Well, I think if you draw Jack Russell, uh, there, a lot of Jack Russells look like, will yeah. look like that drawing. Um, I mean... I know that my sister-in-law came back from the French market a little while back with a little um, painting of a Jack Russell that she she picked up because she has a Jack Russell and it looked like him. But if that Jack Russell had been a face, then it, she wouldn't have bought it because it's no relevance. I, I suppose yeah. that's what I was trying to say was it, it's going to be harder to sell faces because unless it that person means something to the person buying it, then it's obviously harder to sell. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, it totally made sense. Mm. And, um, you know, it was my decision, obviously, just yeah. to try it. Mm. And I didn't actually think it would affect me that much. But but it obviously did. I mean, there were a couple of other things. So probably because I've been creating so much. Yeah. Because I've done most of our challenges that I've taken part in and done most days. I have missed an odd time. So perhaps it was just overload on myself and I just needed a break. And also, I think you were saying like personal issues affect you i think the back of my mind is always that i should be trying to get more graphic design work you know as you as you know um i've been quite quiet with the old design work and i you know i don't enjoy it that much i hope nobody's listening um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so maybe subconsciously i was also also feeling guilty for enjoying drawing you know drawing like join join drawing <laughs> For enjoying drawing and also, you know, doing kicking the creatives and everything like that. It's probably that guilt thing, even though you don't really know it, kicking in. So, so what about you? What do you think caused yours? Um, well, we mentioned Jake Parker's interview earlier. And when I asked him if he'd ever experienced a creative block, I found his answer really interesting. And it actually helped me to understand um, what caused my own, really. Um, I always imagined that blocks were directly linked to what you think and do creatively. So, for example, maybe one of your pieces of work, I don't know, didn't go to plan and it triggered a confidence crisis or maybe your creative well has just run dry or maybe you're just doing way, like you just said, you've been doing way too much um, or maybe you've just been finding it hard to fit anything creative in. But Jake saw that as what he called a shallow block um, but he also talked about a much deeper kind of block, one which can be caused by things going on personally, whether that's to do with a relationship breakdown or financial problems or health issues or something else. And actually, I think mine has been down to a mixture of both shallow and deep. Firstly, the first few months of this year were taken up with commissions. The first one took me the best part of about four months to paint. And I don't regret doing that because I, you know, it really tested my skill level and it turned out to be probably one of my best paintings to date. But what I do regret is taking on another commission straight after I'd finished that one because I just hadn't allowed myself any time in between to, to just work on a couple of smaller paintings or some paintings that I just fancied doing. So after a few more weeks... I just felt like all of my creative energy was being sucked away on something I really wasn't enjoying, to be honest, at all. Um, and then that led to a confidence crisis because by the time I was done, I just felt completely out of practice with my own things. And I also think that this year I found myself spinning way too many plates without having a clear schedule. So I was getting a bit of time here and there for things, but I just wasn't clear of what was most important so I was doing a bit of everything instead of finishing something so that's that's the shallow stuff but going deeper um earlier this year we lost two significant people so we lost one person in March very good friend of ours and um, also my father-in-law in May um they'd both 
both been very ill for about three months before they passed away. Um, but after that time had passed, I realised that um, I was feeling really guilty for being in the studio when, you know, other people I cared about were going through such a horrible time. So I have a feeling there might have been a little bit of self-sabotage maybe going on at, at some point. Yeah, I don't know if it's self-sabotage. It's probably just guilt, a little bit of guilt almost, isn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah, just simple as that. I just felt bad for doing yeah. something I was enjoying doing. Um, and also, I think as well, I stopped going to the gym in February since coming back from our holiday and uh, probably haven't been taking as much care of myself as I should. It was, as we were discussing actually earlier, weren't we, before we started yeah. recording. It, as a, your legs. <laughs> as an artist, it's, it's one of those things where you don't get up and walk around much do you 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 know you're sitting down a lot and I think probably I just was feeling mentally and physically you know unfit really but it took me a lot of soul searching to realize all of that and it was actually a relief when I did so that realization you know working out what that trigger was was the first step to getting out of the block and I'll talk about the steps I took in a bit. But first of all, Tara, you are, I think, as well. You're coming out of your slump. Well, you have come out of your slump now, haven't you? So so why do you think that is? What steps did you take to come out of it? Definitely stopping even contemplating drawing to sell. You know, I've only just got back the enjoyment of drawing, sort of, for this year mainly, really. I did a little bit last year. So that's sort of gone off the table you know I'd love it obviously if I could just draw things and then people say oh I want to buy that but really the type of work I'm creating I'm not even sure if it's the stuff I want to people would want to buy because it's more sketch based stuff so taking that away that takes that lot of pressure off and then I also decided and this was a deliberate thing to try and get out of the block I decided to experiment with the way I was drawing so instead of starting with an outline, because you remember that brush pen that I'd been using, I got a bit addicted to. Yeah. I decided to stop using that for outline and just go straight in with sort of uh, markers. So I was using sort of watercolour markers. Go straight in with those, create the colour areas, see what happened without any outlines. And it was just sort of, it was really freeing, freed me up. It, I guess it just kind of, it's just something totally different so it almost breaks you out of it a little bit and I think on holiday exactly the same thing doing something that's totally different like we were talking about before doing a load of drawings on one page yeah which again was your idea <laughs> and yes that helped me get out get out of it as well because it's something I would never have done I actually said you told me you suggested it didn't you before I went away mm. and I said no you know I'm never gonna do that and then I go away and I do it because then it's my idea <laughs> So, so I was drawing all these little drawings and, and plus I was drawing stuff that I wouldn't normally draw so poor old Kevin got a lot of me drawing him in sort of sitting down lying on the sofa and all sorts and he's actually now said that his vocation could be a lying down beer drinking model <laughs> as I say did you try any life drawing? oh no no I'll have to try that later um so also I was drawing things all around the house and I'd never normally draw that. So like jars, all the sort of stuff you'd like really. Mm, and like Just lamps very, and things I saw. All yeah. That was brilliant. In a yeah. very sketchy fashion yeah. and definitely not sort of stuff I would ever pick to draw where I'd much prefer more organic stuff. I'd prefer people, animals, that sort of thing. Um, so I was drawing that. Um, and this house, I think being somewhere different really helped as well because it had so many different things, that complete change of scene. So we were going down the beach and I was drawing people walking on the beach. Um, and I say, yeah, definitely really mixing up. This house had all different little ornaments and stuff like that, which we don't have anything like that around the house. So, yeah, just that completely change of scene so well you get blind to your own house as well don't you it's nothing new it's nothing interesting anymore when you go to some other house then you notice things don't you yeah and probably as well because we were thinking about selling our house mm. we really cleared things away mm. so <laughs> even though we probably didn't have that we, we're not really knick-knacky sort of pair people no just more dusting isn't it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. so we've got even less of that now yeah. it's very very you know quite sparse actually someone actually said that when they came around our house the other day um so yeah so we've probably got less sort of inspiration to draw or just like you say i'm blind to it so mm. yeah yeah what, what about you well i knew that i had to do something um, before I ended up cutting off my own ear, sending it to you in the post. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so first of all, I, I made the decision not to take on any new commissions until next year, not unless it's small and something I really, really fancy doing. Um, it's quite funny, wasn't it, Tara? Because I, I remember making that absolute decision and I felt so relieved. And a day later, somebody asked me to do three paintings. Do you remember? <laughs> Goldfish. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, what do I do? I ended up... Um, so, well, I didn't say no, actually. I just wouldn't... The de- he wanted them done by sort of mid-October, which was ridiculous. I was like, no, I can't do, I can't do that. So I got away with that one. I can't believe you even contemplated it, though. I can't. I, I even thought at the time, why am I even considering this? I think it was because they were only little 8 by 8 paintings. Yeah. Um, so, you know. I can't remember. What did they want you to draw? Just, was, it just, something, was it marbles? I, no, I did. No, no. I wouldn't have even considered it if it was um, at that point. It was just... a. I had done in the past, I've just done three um, three goldfish swimming. <laughs> um, and I, I did a little set of three and they'd seen that. Um, I think they'd seen them on Art Finder and they basically wanted me to pretty much do something not the same, but similar to that. And, yeah. you know, that they're just, they're small and they're not taxing particularly at all. So I thought I could do that. But at the same time, I did think I don't actually want to, to I don't feel like painting that yeah uh, at the moment so I was already in the danger zone straight away and um I thought well if I'm going to do this I'm going to make sure I have plenty of time so I said I I'll get it done by the end no by mid December and they said oh no we need it um uh, mid October well that was probably 3 weeks ago <laughs> I thought yeah. no I'm not going to do three paintings in 4 weeks it'll take me a week to to even get the things delivered to, to you know the the right canvas is delivered so yeah. I, I, I was relieved anyway so but anyway so I decided I made that decision no more commissions until um probably mid next year and um I also just took a break from battling with the paintbrushes and just drew for fun instead for a while so our listeners might already know that we uh, co-wrote a children's book didn't we and uh, for ages I'd had this image in my head of what the characters would look like um, so I decided that it was time to bring them to life and I tried my hand at drawing some characters, which I've never really done. Um, and it was a, so much fun. Um, so although I was giving myself a break from painting, I was still creating for fun. And I think that's a really healthy way of doing it. I was actually surprised you shared them online because you're quite nervous about sharing some things, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose it's because I just have this style that I do and I I think people kind of expect a certain yeah. thing, don't they? So, yeah, I just decided, oh, well, I'll share them. And um, But it was more just, just the fun of it, really. Well, it's like me, isn't it? It's the same thing. We're almost saying that you need to experiment yeah. and do something different. Yeah. It's, it's that it's that thing isn't it yeah I mean I'm no illustrator but it was just fun to get something out of my head onto paper because I'm I don't work from imagination in general at all but this literally had all come from what I'd visualized throughout the whole writing process you know so that was that was a really fun thing to do you you did those other little faces as well didn't you um that you showed me the ones with ink faces with ink yeah you were doing I don't know if you drew them off a tv or something you sure that was you, me? There was, there was a woman with a yeah. There was a woman with a little hat on. Um, was it Laurel or Hardy? Or something oh as well? yeah, oh yeah, a black and white um, yeah. from old black and white movies. Oh yeah, I did a yeah. few of those. Yeah, that was they were different. I didn't share those online, did I? Or am I? No, ju- no. you shared them with me. I shared them you? with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were just a bit of fun as well. I did really enjoy that actually, and I think yeah. it's like again, it's just getting out of stepping away from what you do normally and just doing something just for fun for your own fun not necessarily something you have to share um but I think that really really helped and you really enjoyed those as well didn't you yeah it's it's not doing what you should do yes that's exactly it the other thing I did is I rejoined the gym um healthy mind starts with a healthy body right so you know I've (laughs) I've done that and I we were saying this earlier weren't we um before we started recording about the gym and um yeah Yeah. I'm definitely feeling better already it's been a month and already I'm finding a lot easier and just feeling healthier really so um so that's another thing and I've also been looking at much better ways of organizing my time I mean I was always good at finding ways to save time but my problem has always been prioritizing and focusing on one thing at a time because I'm so easily distracted Um, and since I've done that it's made the world of difference Um, and 
final thing I did is I've started dedicating time now specifically to get inspired and by that I mean getting out going to galleries and other inspiring places so Paul and I decided to put um, aside one day a month just for that purpose and um, I mean the other day we went off to Tunbridge Wells and you know we went had a look at some galleries and things because it's easy just to sort of get so zoned in on your own surroundings and you forget that you need to get out there and see things to get inspiration so yeah to dedicate time just for that I think is a really good idea too so you're going out to galleries but you prefer to go local galleries don't you yeah I love yeah going is that to... quite local to you yes 20 minutes up yeah. the road yeah all ah, right not far um I did, actually I didn't know you'd booked in time for that Paul doesn't mind being dragged to galleries <laughs> If if um, I'd have asked him when we first met, can you see yourself walking around an art gallery? He'd have laughed at me <laughs> <laughs> and said no. But now he really likes them. But he, oh, I've had to train him not to be too vocal <laughs> <laughs> because there's certain styles that he's like he doesn't understand at all, yeah. And certain styles he really loves. But yeah, he he doesn't mind going around a gallery at all. He he'll, he'll equally uh, enjoy it. Do you have to buy him lunch as well? Well, we've got a joint bank account, so <laughs> it doesn't really make any difference <laughs> who buys it. No, it's just we make a day of it. It, it was a really lovely day. And um, and the three galleries we went to were so different. There was one that was very... Um, everything was quite realistic, realism and all the rest of it, in landscapes and all this kind of thing. And then there was one that was a lot of figurative things and really sort of sweeping statements and of paint you know and that was good but there was another one it was kind of a real eclectic mix of all sorts of things and there was kind of still life and there was um sort of real this is what I'm really enjoying looking at lately scribbly pen sketches like oh. like brush pen sketches but they're really um naive looking but I really like them and I'm just fascinated by looking at these little pen sketches but it's the price that Paul looks at he he's he walks around going like <laughs> what's this code c I'm going to look at the price of this painting and and he goes it's not a greeting card I don't know but he'll look at me and start miming <laughs> and saying these words saying basically saying have you seen the price of this <laughs> Of course, if you look into what's causing your block and you find it's more to do with personal issues such as a relationship breakdown or really serious problems at work, then you might need to sort of find a way to address it or to cope with it, even if that means seeking outside help. There are also other things that we haven't mentioned yet that can cause a block. Now, one of them might be that you're really concerned about the outcome, actually too concerned than actually enjoying the process. So sometimes you'll you'll sort of put things off because you're waiting for the right materials, the right time, the planet to align before you actually start creating. It's all because you're so worried that the image in your head is not going to be the same as what comes out on, on paper. I mean, I know this only too well because I remember once I really put off sketching a face in watercolour because I was scared that it wouldn't look like sort of the image I had in my head that it might look like. And of course, the longer you do that, the less you practice and the less it is ever going to look like the image that you've got in your head. And sometimes so it might be got... better. Yeah, exactly. But, you know, whatever you do, you've got to actually enjoy the, the creating as well as the end results, I think. Yeah, absolutely. You, you might um, even just be bored with what you're creating. If you've been creating similar things for a long time, maybe you just need to play for a while, a bit like I did with those book characters. Um you know, try something just for fun or even some childish doodling. I mean, I was really inspired when we interviewed John Bergerman. For anyone who just wants to play with creativity for a while, then listen out for his interview. I think it's going to air on the 29th of October, um, but you can Google him before then. He is just so creative, and it kind of reminds me, the stuff he does, a bit um, like, do you remember when I made that little animal out of the dog hair that I'd swept yeah. up from my kitchen floor a couple of years oh god it makes my house sound <laughs> like it's really filthy it really isn't but have a Labrador and he was molting like you wouldn't believe and um I swept the floor I thought oh this I can't believe how much hair I've picked up anyway I rolled this this fur like in a kind of hamster like shape shape and then uh, stuck a pair of googly eyes on it and called him Watson and uh I showed you didn't I Tara 
Well, you made another one. Do you remember when we did our Does Alcohol Make You More Creative Charlie? No, that was it. That's the one I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you did one prior to that, though, didn't you? Oh, I've probably... I... Yeah, I've probably done yeah. it before. Yeah, I have. And um, But the thing is, it's, it's getting in touch with that childish side again. It, it can be really refreshing and a reminder that creating just should be fun. Um, I mean, Tara, we've planned a day out, haven't we? In a Well, actually, I think it's a couple of weeks' time, next isn't Sunday. it? Is it next Sunday? Um, yeah. A day out in London. Um, and it's going to... Scared. <laughs> you're scared of London? <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of what you're going to get me to do. Well, that's what I'm scared of. <laughs> well, we've planned out this, this day in London to meet up um, just for... Well, basically, it's just going to be about having some fun. No pressure, just a creative fun day. Um, there's going to, not going to be any pressure to do great drawings or great sketches. It's just going to be about having a laugh and just getting inspired and perhaps visiting some museums and, you know, but, but just having a fun day out with a like-minded person could be a great way of getting your mojo back, I think. Another idea is to take a workshop and maybe even try a subject that's completely different than what you're used to. So you might remember I took a portrait workshop earlier this year and that was one step towards coming out of my block. Um, I think it really, really helped me. First of all, it opened my eyes to other things that I'm capable of, but it also it was just nice to do something different for a change. And I really surprised myself as well because I'm not a portrait artist. So I was really surprised when I came home with this portrait and I was like, oh look at this portrait I've done, you know, it's just really nice and it just it's boosted my confidence a bit back up, I suppose. Well, it's that motivation thing, isn't it, mm. almost? Yeah. And, and, and that could actually be your problem. You've got a lack of motivation. You know, maybe you've got a lack of mojo and it could be because other people around you, you know, if they're getting you down or, you know, you might need to avoid certain people. I know I've done that at times because... You know, they, they kind of, you want someone to be encouraging you and, and instead they're sort of dragging you down, even if they don't do it deliberately. Uh, it can really affect how you feel. And think about joining an art or creative group of encouraging people. Like like you did, I actually went to a workshop that I, I discussed and just chatting to different people who've got similar interests was, was really nice and made you, it made you feel really good. And you've also got online groups and there's so many, and we've mentioned it loads of time, but our Facebook group, you couldn't get more encouraging people on there so so definitely join there because they really will motivate you there's nothing like having a group of people that's sort of your cheerleaders it's brilliant no and i think the best thing about the group as well is because nothing on there is shown outside of that page is it so it's a very safe no. place to share as well um definitely mm. and, and no one's mean i mean if, if you want criticism as in good criticism and help they will help you and make suggestions but if you don't ask for it, they're not going to give you it. And they're just going to sort of try and urge you on and encourage you. Absolutely, yeah. It's great. We've, we've been very lucky with our group, actually. There's not a single person in there that has not been anything other than lovely. So no. we've been really lucky. Um, it could be that your last piece of work wasn't very successful. And that's one thing that can really kick your confidence to the floor if you don't get right back on the horse. And as to whether it was a failure or not, well, that depends on how you look at it, doesn't it? I mean, it's highly likely that you learn a lot from that. And I'm going to put this in quotes, unsuccessful painting. Um, so how can that be a negative thing? It certainly wasn't a waste of time. We've got to remember that a bad painting is simply a stepping stone to a good one. Nobody ever got better at anything without making mistakes along the way. And I guarantee that every artist out there who you most admire has a ton of paintings that they're not happy with behind them. And um, I bet as well that a lot of those paintings that you're not happy with, because I found this, everybody else loves. It's, it's, you're often your own worst critic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm I'm guilty of feeling exactly the same when it happens to me. I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but I remember looking through my sketchbook and realising that there was a gap in there of a few weeks, I think, between one page and the next. And what had happened is I'd drawn a sketch that I just really hated. And that one sketch just, it led to a few weeks of like no sketching at all. So it had just knocked my confidence. But I think it's um, far worse if it's a painting or something you've invested a lot of time into. I mean, that can really, really hurt. But um, when I look back on it, I, I, it wasn't actually as bad as I thought. I think sometimes it's just about the frame of mind you're in at that particular time. Because, you know, on another day, I might have just covered that sketch up or 
moved on to the next page. But when this happens to you and you feel your confidence sliding, then just take some time, sit down and look through all the paintings you've done that you are really proud of. You know, the ones that, you know, make you wonder, how did I do that? Um, that's one good way of realising your own ability. And if you don't have them to hand, then just go through your blog or your website if you've got one. Yeah, and I think what you said about your sketchbook there, how you had that one sketch that you didn't like. Mm. Remember that a sketchbook is just a sketch. The idea is that you experiment in there. So you're going to get some duff things because you're either drawing quickly, you're trying something new out. So you, know, you can't expect those all to be perfect. You've got to expect to get some bad ones to move you forward and get some good stuff. Yeah, I mean, by definition, a sketchbook is basically a, it's just a means to an end, isn't it? Yeah. And they were never meant to be for a perfect drawing. And I guess that's one of the problems now. You, you tend to do these sketchbooks and you keep them as this precious thing. Almost like an artwork in itself. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? It's sort of gone that way, especially, I think, with social media. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The walkthroughs and all that. Yeah, I think you're, when you often talk about, don't you, getting the cheapest sketchbook you can possibly find yeah. and just playing in there. And I think that actually is a really good idea because, yeah, I do think you're right. Sketching these days has almost become like this art form in itself and you sort of look at sketch and you see a good sketch and you see what you think is a bad sketch and actually there's no such thing as a bad sketch at all a sketch is just that yeah I mean I see some of these sketchbooks online and I think you know I would buy that sketchbook yeah you know it's like a, a little mini work of art mm. amazing so also you could just be completely burnt out like we mentioned before if, if you're constantly creating there might be a time where you just need to you know just take a break for a minute and do that refilling of the creative inspiration I know I felt this once uh, especially when I did the 100 day project and I'm sure anybody who's done a long creative project like that where you're actually creating something every day for a long time will feel the burnout and I created 100 cartoons digitally and the last thing I ever wanted to do afterwards was create more cartoons. So I think if you do do that, if you do that long project, give yourself a permission to have a little break. Or if you do want to do something, maybe switch it up a bit. So I was doing digital stuff. Maybe I could have, you know, drawn by hand or written some poems or, you know, done something different. I just think you need to sort of break it in some way, whether that's taking time off or switching it up a bit. Yeah, I mean, you might simply just feel uninspired. You just don't know what to paint or draw or write or whatever. And if that's the case, um, one way to help is to take a day out um, specifically to find inspiration, like I was talking about earlier. And as I said before, one thing I find really useful is to visit local art galleries. I'm not talking about those swanky London ones. I'm just talking about the local ones. And that is one of my favourite things to do. And sometimes that can really, really trigger ideas. Or just getting out of your usual environment can really help, even if it's just sitting in a coffee shop and taking some time to be somewhere different. And this, I think, has been one of my own biggest problems. So, as you know, Tara, I work part-time from home and Paul built my um, art studio on the back of my office, which means when I'm quiet in the office, I can get on with my painting. Um, my house backs onto the woods which means I don't even have to drive anywhere to take the dog out. I can just walk down my garden, through the gate, and there I am. I mean, and then you've got online shopping now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't have to leave the house. Yeah, exactly. I, I literally wouldn't have to leave the house. And that all sounds wonderful, doesn't it? But sometimes then I, I realise I'm living in a bit of a bubble, which isn't always so great. I mean, no wonder my inspiration runs dry sometimes. Um, just not getting out enough. <laughs> So one of the things I've changed, as I've said before, is I'm making regular time to get out more, especially to get inspired. And I don't do online shopping now. <laughs> I actually go out and do my shopping. Um, but it's also very important as well to have a notebook with you um, and write in it every time you have an idea. Then you'll always have something to look back on for inspirations when, you know, when your ideas run dry. And they can always go back to our episode if they run out of inspiration. What was that crazy episode we did on coming up with ideas? <laughs> I don't know, which one was it? We've had so many crazy episodes. I can't, I can't remember, but it was one about getting uh, how to generate creative ideas, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. If, if so, yeah. Yeah, that was, oh, I don't know. Yeah, they'll just have to go yeah. on our podcast page and look. Yeah. Other things you can do is um, read art books, take a workshop, as we said before, or even an online course. All of these things, I think, can be great ways of getting inspired. 
And if lack of inspiration is your problem, you could always join in with a creative challenge. Most challenges come with optional prompts and they can be really useful when your ideas are running dry. Um, so it can encourage you as well to experiment with new subjects and mediums. And that in itself can be inspiring. Yeah, I mean, you did a recent online course, didn't you? Didn't you learn about Procreate? Yeah, I um, bought an iPad Pro and um, and you love yours, don't you? And the the pencil that goes with it. I haven't used it for ages, actually, because I'm doing the hand stuff. Mm, yeah, well, I was kind of fascinated to, to just have a play with iPad Pro, but then I realised that I had this this Procreate on this iPad Pro and the pencil and I just wasn't using it because I just couldn't figure out how to use it because it doesn't come, these apps don't come with instruction books, do they? Do you know what I mean? You just have <laughs> to... PDF. Yeah, well, you just... Yeah, and the thing is with me, I'm one of these people um, that I learn really quickly when I'm watching something, but trying to take something in via an instruction book just doesn't sink in. I don't know what it is, but um, so I found this... Uh, uh, was it Skillshare? I think it was yeah. a course on Procreate, and um, that was really good. And I, I just basically sat there watching the whole thing, just taking all these notes. And now I know, I know how to use it. I still haven't experimented a great deal with it because um, I just haven't. But um, I know, like, if I want to sit there and sketch something while Paul's watching the footy or something like that then I, I can just grab my iPad Pro and I'll, I now know how to do that easily do you know what I mean yeah so and I think switching that up as well because if you try a bit of digital that will also help mm. you know creating that mix again isn't it yeah I think as, as well if you work in the creative industry obviously like I do then too much creativity in that sense so your job creativity when you have to create that can also suck the want to create in other ways I think and that's probably a terrible way of putting it but because you're you're creating for work it kind of sucks the energy so you don't want to do your own thing um, and I know also if you do multiple creative things at one time that can also be a problem we've got some people in our Facebook group and they've done multiple challenges at the same time now some love that but I know some last month did like two or three challenges at once and they did find themselves feeling a little bit sort of burnt out about that all. Yeah, burnout. It's, it, it's so easy. And, and th what you were saying about having a creative job, I've got the opposite problem. And I've, my job's completely non-creative and I yearn for a creative job. But actually, I, yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. You, I think you're probably right. It could probably just result in burnout. I think it depends what sort of creativity. Mm. I think you don't want to be doing the same or very similar type of creativity. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it can literally be poor time management as well that causes a block. <clears throat> but that's a whole different episode, I think. So we decided, didn't we, Tara, that we're going to make another episode specifically on time management for creatives, which we will air, I think it's going to be about mid-November. So listen out for that one because we've got lots of really useful suggestions that will help you get better organized for 2019 and with that in mind we will also be sharing something else with you which you will really want to know about if time is an issue for you one more thing i just want to quickly mention and that is that sometimes losing interest in something that you normally love to do it can be a symptom of depression and that's not always immediately recognized now we can't go um, into that here because we're not professionals um, but bear in mind that if you think that might be you maybe it's worth talking to someone about that um, but meanwhile we asked the question recently didn't we Tara on our Facebook group what are your top tips on how to get over a creative block and we were literally flooded with answers we had hundreds didn't we Tara oh, it was amazing I yeah. know um, so we thought we'd share some of them we can't share them all obviously um, but we thought we'd share some of them with you today some of the answers were really quite long so I've had to edit them down quite a bit and pluck out the most important points and I'll start with Catherine Tripp who said um, that having half-finished paintings lying around made her feel too guilty to start something new. She said that the things she gathered for inspiration and half-finished projects began to sap energy instead of provide energy. She says in order to deal with this, she asks herself these three questions. Number one, am I done with this? Number two, does this give me energy or take energy? Number three, can any of these supplies be recycled or repurposed? Number four, 
act on what you know needs to change right now. And I've got to say, I totally relate to what she says about the guilt of having unfinished paintings lying around. That's one thing that can really hold me back from starting something new. You turn yours around, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fresh eyes. Fresh eyes. Yeah. Um, I've got one from Christy Criswell Neff. And she says, do you get over them or just go around them? I just walk away, go have a glass of wine, go out in nature, watch some YouTube artists create, look over some of my favourite pieces. The worst thing I can do is try to paint when I don't feel like it. The only thing that happens is frustration and disappointment. The whole idea of painting is to feel happy and escape from stress. That is so true about the thing when you draw and you don't feel like it. Although, actually, I do sometimes think there's a don't feel like it and can't be bothered. And I think they're almost two different things. There's one when you're like in a bad mood and there's one when you're just feeling lazy. Yeah. And I have to push myself when I'm feeling lazy. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Um, Okay, so Drew Bailey. Lung burning, heart pounding bike rides. And there is something to be said for that. And that's one of the reasons I I rejoined the gym. And you've just taken up running, haven't you, Tara? Yeah, but I've only done it once so far. (laughs) And you're you're in agony already. (laughs) Yeah, well, we were going to do this episode standing up, weren't we? Try a standing up um, podcast. And I decided my legs couldn't take it after trying to run once. (laughs) So you're you're recording from bed. (laughs) Yeah, I should have done, shouldn't I? (laughs) Okay, so I've got one from Radiant Lotus Fine Art. When I'm blocked, it's usually because I've got off schedule. So simply listing what I need to do in the studio, work, life, and putting things into time slots really lets me see the when of making art. And I've got LK Radford 95. When I'm experiencing a creative block, I spend some quiet time in the studio doing mundane things like dusting and organising. The simple act of spending time with my collections and supplies without an agenda to make or create allows space enough for me to rest and yet keeps me anchored. I usually don't go a full day in there without the itch to create returning in some manner. Yeah, that that often works for me as well. Yeah, not for me so much the (laughs) cleaning. (laughs) No, (laughs) dusting and organising. Um, I've got one from Hair Hair Samurai. Am I saying that right? The absolute best way to get over any creative block is to absorb data, whether that be books, events, film, games, etc. Your mind is a sponge. When you're in a creative state, you squeeze that sponge and all that prior information collected to attempt to make something different. Fill the sponge and start again. Creativity is receiving, processing info and then giving. Did I say that funny? No, no, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got this feeling it, reminds... I've got a feeling it might be air samurai though because isn't that spelt as in an heir to the throne? Yeah, but I, oh, might be just why Rather I say than funny. Hair samurai. <laughs> <laughs> we always get these funny don't we the funny names <laughs> on a final I was going to no- say this reminds you of James Altucher with his um, idea sex sorry his, his what <laughs> James Altucher you know the entrepreneur James Altucher no online. no oh, oh well he's he's a big entrepreneur online he, he's very interesting um, he's also got a podcast which is very good but he talks about um, ideas having sex and basically what this is you take in ideas from all different places like inspiration from everywhere say you've got a gallery youtube video all sorts and then somehow it gets processed in your brain and bits of that come together for you to make something new from it that's idea sex (laughs) (laughs) i thought i thought you meant that he tries to gather inspiration while he's (laughs) oh no not while he's having sex I was like, <laughs> if you were the other person, you'd be a bit... <laughs> Excuse me, I've just got to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no, I'm going to say that. I'll try that with Kevin. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Stop bothering me while I write that down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I was thinking, what on earth is she all about? <laughs> You're thinking about KY Jelly from the other episode, aren't you? Oh, don't. Oh, stop. Uh, right, let me just... Uh, comp- that episode was art tips, by the way. Uh, <laughs> general art tips. Yeah, if you want to know. Yeah. Oh, look, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Right, let me just... Okay. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> on a final note, 
again, Jake Parker. I keep going on about Jake Parker. Yeah, he I was, think you've got a good bit of a thing for Jake uh, Parker. No, he was he was so good though. His his episode was really really good, and um and another thing he mentioned, um, is that every year he carves out four weeks to stop creating. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're a full time creative, it's fine. If you're a part time creative, then four weeks might be a bit much. But just um. He uses that time just to top up his creative well. So maybe that's another thing to think about, you know, just carving out a little bit of time where you know that you, that is just for recharging so that you, you know that you've got that coming up. And um, I just want to mention something as well that my dad told me about recently. <clears throat> Tara, do you watch Gogglebox? I've seen odd episodes. Have you ever seen Giles and Mary? <laughs> I wouldn't know who they were, no. They're, oh, they're a really eccentric couple. And um, Giles, he's, well, they're both really sort of posh. And he's an artist. And uh, my dad, uh, I got the book. That they've got a diary. They bought out a diary. A Diary of Two Nobodies, I think it's called. And I bought it for my dad because he was quite fascinated by Giles and Mary. And, um, and he's been reading it. And he, he texted me the other day. And uh, he said that, that Giles told his accountant something which I thought was really, really funny. So Giles sells his paintings for about £3,000 each. Don't quote me on this. I think this is what he said. So he sells his paintings for about £3,000 each. However, he only does one painting a year. So his accountant has questioned him about it um, and told him that as it only takes him one month to do one painting... He could do 12 paintings a year and that would increase his income from £3,000 to £36,000 a year. And I just love Giles' answer to this. He said, the reason I can't do more than one painting a year is that the huge forces I need to produce a painting require months of what I call recharging of my batteries, which involves coastal walks along Anglesey, contact with the soil and a period of fallow creativity to build up to the supposed creative appetite for the next great effort. <laughs> that, wow. that really made me chuckle, but I thought, yeah, that sums it up quite nicely, I reckon. <laughs> yeah. But it, when, you, cause when you put that in your, your notes, Giles, I was thinking about the cartoonish, you know, the cartoon strip. Oh, no. Oh. No, no. I, I, no, I'm going to have to watch Giles now. <laughs> it, he never talks about art in, in Gogglebox. Oh, no, not really. Oh. But he, but when you sort of look at the two of them, I think she's an author and he's a, he's an artist and they, they're very eccentric and they're just funny. Uh, they're, yeah. they're just a really funny couple. Are they retired? Well, no, he is an artist, but he only paints one painting a year. Well, that's what I was thinking. He must um, be retired. Yes. Yeah, I believe yeah. so. I believe so, yeah. yeah. But um, if you go onto his website, his paintings are really good really good i'll have to have a look yeah yeah um but definitely what you said about taking time to allow you know inspiration to come in have that rest and sometimes when you are doing really mundane things is when inspiration might strike i know i've um when i worked in some of my jobs like full-time graphics in the past that's when i've had ideas for characters because we've got no work on and so you're just sitting there like twiddling your fingers and so your mind you know thinks well, how can i amuse you I'll come up with ideas for characters. Well, that's how mine does anyway. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, it, it's really odd that. And and they didn't, I remember, um, I don't know if she said it on ours, but Kosha Kuna from Sketchbook School. Yeah. I don't know if it was on our podcast or when I heard the Creative Push one, but I remember her saying that when she had that really mundane job where she was doing, was it day entry or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, she said that's when she got some of her got best work, creative work done because you know her mind was i guess just taking things in but not having to stress it was so relaxed i guess yeah yeah um now before we read the answers out to our previous question i just want to mention the challenges that we've got going on for november so we've got line november now for this challenge we're challenging you to do some print making and create a series of liner prints throughout the month and if you don't have all the kit for lino printing, just try experimenting with other materials. Get some potatoes, do some potato prints. Do some, I don't know what those, are they mono prints where you kind of scratch, yeah. scratch in the surface and print it, anything like that. Do some print making. And if you don't know what lino printing is, just look it up on Google, uh, on probably YouTube actually. Yeah. And like you say, you can use a potato. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done that for years. No, you? not since primary school. For Quick Kick November, we are challenging you to draw with a brush and ink. 
or paint if you don't have any ink without using a pen or pencil first and by getting straight in there with a brush you can simplify your drawings and experiment with creating different marks to add interest and texture to your work. And then we've got Kick Time November. Now if you haven't heard of our Kick Times they're the challenges that you do one project over the entire month and they're great for people who'd rather sink their teeth into one big project and you can do any type of project you want you could do art story a poem piece of music animation anything you like really and the prompt for november is wish so uh, good luck with that one if you try it and we've got kick collage we are challenging you to experiment with collage in your work every day throughout november and you can complete the entire piece of art using images you've cut or torn out or using elements you found alternatively you could create a drawing or a painting over your collage elements um, when creating a piece of art using collage you'll find that tone is far more important than colour and it's a fun way of learning to understand just how important the contrast between your lights and darks really is. Right, shall I just remind everybody what the previous question that we asked was? Yeah. And that was, what's your favourite art or creative quote and why? And shall I kick that off? Yeah. Uh, so we've got Wendy Parkin and she says, Winston Churchill said... The definition of success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. I think this applies to art. Definitely. Mm. Then we've got Dorothy Walker, Bob Ross. We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. I'm always saying that something was a happy accident and then she's got a little smiley face. I like that actually. When you do do things and it sort of goes wrong but it looks good. Yeah, sometimes I do things that I don't mean to and I think, oh, I'm going to leave that. That looks really good. Yeah, like when we're videoing ourselves and we look stupid and we <laughs> leave it in. So then we've got Catherine C. Slater. I think it was Picasso who had said something along the lines of, inspiration will come, but it has to find you working. Totally get that one as well, because that's the thing where you put something off, isn't it? Yeah. You, you don't do something. You've really got to get out there, start working uh, to get inspired. Yeah, I agree. We've got Megan Jeffrey, and she says, be regular and orderly in your life so that you may be violent and original in your work Gustave Flaubert I probably said that wrong and, and I, when she said that I said oh dear does that mean you've got to be organised <laughs> you're well, not very organised are you <laughs> well I am organised I'm just messy so depends what orderly is classed as yeah. and then we've got Deb Sane and she says making bad art is better than making no art go make something and we don't know who that's attributed to but it was on her Pinterest board and I've got Anna Sellers, finished, not perfect, Jake Parker. And that's God, he really is featuring a lot. He isn't is he? in today's episode. He really is. Um, it is easy for me to get stuck into the perfectionist zone and never make a final product. That's so true. I totally relate to that. Yeah. LK Radford again. Um, LK Radford ninety five. That's her Instagram name, obviously. Art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. Thomas Merton, I find this to be true in my art life. I can lose myself completely in the process, only to find clarity and direction in the result. Tracy Grady, I have a few of these in a collection. Art is the only way to run away without leaving home. Twyla Tharp. And I've got Mariam Plowman again. Picasso summed it up well. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. So true. And then we've got a brand new question, haven't we? We have. The question this week is, is creativity something that we are born with or is it something we can learn? We'd love to know what you think. Yeah, as always, you can tweet your answers at Kick Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group, which, by the way, if you haven't joined, I recommend you do. Um, we'll put the new question up there and also on the Facebook page on our Instagram page, which is Kick in the Creatives. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. But that's it for this week. And we will be back soon. Have a great day, Tara, of creating. Yes, and you. Yes. And we'll speak soon. Oh, yeah. And I'll see you in London. Oh, yes. Next Sunday. We will. We will. Yeah. Speak to you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon!
how much for the scribbly ones? Can you remember? Um, I didn't. No, we didn't look at the price of those. That was in a different gallery. I can't remember those ones. But there was one oh. painting in one of the galleries, and it was in a style that Paul really doesn't doesn't get at all. It was just very modern very art, modern. Probably done in about ten minutes. I'd have thought, and it was something like four thousand. You realise people are going to kill you now. The ones that like modern art. <laughs> I don't. That. I have no problem with modern <laughs> art at all. But the price of this one, I did. I did, It did make me wonder whether or not I should change my style because it was like four thousand pounds, and I thought that was a ten minute job. <laughs> yeah. But you know, that's everyone likes different things, and this person who who painted that's probably got a big name behind them, so they can put that price on it, can't they? Yeah, I might nice. have to cut, <laughs> cut that. <out>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. yeah, the ten minute thing. Maybe I should cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, it was nice. It was lovely. It wasn't. There was nothing horrible about it. It was just so expensive. <laughs> you put that as an outtake oh, at the end. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Where were we? 